Welcome to the channel, DT here. Thanks for joining me as I document my journey getting back into golf. Professional level golf tech is now available to common golfers like me, and I couldn't be more thrilled with the data-driven aspect of today's golf game. It seems unreal to me. As I grew up in the 80s, my high school golf coach custom fit and made my golf clubs for me in the early 90s using components parts of knockoff name brand golf clubs from Golfsmith magazine. I played a lot of golf growing up. I worked at a golf course across the street from my parents' house. My high school golf team played our home course for free and my friends worked at different golf courses where I played for free as well. I literally played golf seven days a week throughout high school. I got to be pretty good with a low single digit handicap often shooting in the upper 70s and consistently shooting in the lower 80s. My lowest carded round was 76. I never hit the ball exceptionally far. My swing speed has always been low and I was always known for my tempo and solid short game around the greens and putting. But I stopped playing golf in college and didn't really play after I graduated, but for three rounds in the 2000 to 2008 time frame, my vision began to deteriorate. I have an uncorrectable eye disease to the point I can no longer see my ball flight. Kind of important. I also realized then and now that golf is rather expensive if you have to pay to play and aren't finding golf balls in the woods across the street from your house. In 2022, my family joined a country club with a beautiful golf course, and it served as a great excuse to get back into golf. I played a few abbreviated nine-hole rounds and hit range balls with the same set of golf clubs my high school golf coach made me 30 years ago and carried them in the same ping stand bag I got from one of my high school golf teammates who had access to that kind of gear from his family's country club until a massive upgrade was initiated. My wife convinced me to get the Rapsodo mobile launch monitor in June, 2022. I was absolutely blown away by the data, video, and pro tracer-like footage it captures, and I also use it to see where my ball goes on the course. I then did a full bag professional golf fitting using the latest TrackMan in July 2022, and went completely all in on making over all my golf clubs and bag two in August 2022. Check it out. Hey, DT here. Got the call from Barton Creek Fitting Studio that my new clubs are ready and I'm super excited. Just walking in right now to pick them up. Let's do it. Literally 30 years in the making, really excited to take you through this new setup, this new bag, new clubs, and I'll walk you through what everything looks like. We start with the 2022 TaylorMade Stealth Pro Staff Bag. Just unveiling this right now, taking it out of the box and unwrapping it. First impressions, it's a, a striking bag, really spiffy, really neat, uh, so excited. And let me start taking through the, the clubs. Again, this is literally 30 years in the making. So we're in 2022 right now. My clubs, my current set of clubs were made in the early 90s by my high school golf coach. So technology has evolved quite a bit since then. And I was just so excited to go to the Barton Creek Fitting Studio and get fitted for this new set. I had been chatting with a buddy who had recently gone to club champion and he had seen I think it was 30 or 35 yards additional on his driver and I was doing the whole bag and couldn't wait to uh, to get started I remember we we warmed up I hit some some seven irons of out of my bag and then I went over and started testing seven irons from uh, other major brands I think my average seven iron with my current bag was going like 147 and I was seeing things just fly off these new clubs. And I think I was going 170, 171. These 
new clubs where the ball was just exploding off the face out of a seven iron. Couldn't believe it. And so just was giddy as to going through the rest of the bag and getting set up. I really deliberated about the uh, the irons and ended up going with the TaylorMade P790s and turned out to be a fantastic club. Uh, you can see still brand new, still have the, the wrapper on there, but really looking forward to going out to the range actually later today to hit these for the very first time. So we went pitching wedge down to four iron with the P790s. We did a one inch extension on all my clubs. And that was something that I was really looking forward to. I had noticed that over the years, I had developed a dip, if you will, in my swing. I would kind of scoop down. Again, my initial clubs were made 30 years ago for me. I definitely grew a fair amount after that and I'm taller than than the average person. So I'm really looking forward to what it will feel like from a stability perspective to hit these new irons versus my older ones, which I, I felt as though I had to, to really bend over a lot. And, and even you can see in my swing, my older clubs, kind of a dip that I did in my swing. So we went through the age old question of five wood versus hybrid. And so ended up actually going with TaylorMade Stealth Hybrid and super excited to put this in the bag. You know, we, during the, the fitting session, we used the latest TrackMan and just the data available now after coming back, you know, 30 years plus from really looking at my swing. Amazing to see the technology and the data available. We, uh, we then went to uh, three wood. And so ended up going with hit hit all major brands, but ended up going with TaylorMade Stealth three wood, and again with one inch extension in the shaft. And so really looking forward to putting this in the bag. I was seeing I actually never I carried a three wood, uh, but it would never hit it. And uh, I was seeing out of my driver previously, I was seeing probably two twenty max with uh, with rollout. And with three wood, I was seeing over 230. So I was excited to eventually get to driver and see what uh, what was possible there. And so speaking of driver, ended up going with the the Ping G425, and it's just a just a beautiful looking club, amazing. And it's funny because my my existing bag of clubs. You know, again, made by my high school golf coach, th- or early 90s. If you remember the Golfsmith magazine, you would buy component parts and make your own clubs. So I never actually had any name brand clubs. And so I was hitting a, uh, a knockoff uh, Callaway Big Bertha. And uh, I mean, the head on that, uh, you know, we're at 460 cc's with the G425. I, I have no idea what, what my old... Uh, clubs were, but I think my hybrid, my hybrid now is as big as what, what my driver was. So it's so funny. I next went over and did uh, wedges and really started going through a few different sets of, of wedges. You know, in my mind, Cleveland was the the big name back in the nineties and there's been obviously a lot of changes. And so the wedges that I ended up going with were the Callaway Jaws Raw wedges. I'm literally just taking off the the covers to these things. What made the difference for me on these, I hit a number of wedges. What ended up making the difference for me on these was my misses on wedges seemed to be a fat or kind of a chunky uh, type swing and these wedges just seem to really go through uh, the turf so much better than the other ones. And so it really mitigated or hedged against my common miss. Excited to also put these in the bag too. And then finally, we ended up going into putting and so neat to to get analyzed from a putting perspective. So put the laser on, started going through a number of putts and seeing, seeing where I was currently hitting it and what needed to be done. And so historically, I had been a pretty decent uh, short game player, a a pretty decent putter since I've gone out and played maybe four rounds or so this year uh, for the first time in in say like 10, 15 years. My putting has gotten a lot worse, uh, maybe because of my vision, maybe uh, because of the putter, who knows, but ended up hitting a number of different putters and was actually going to settle on a, I think it was a tailor-made stealth putter 
red face had a, a, a nice single alignment line and that was pretty neat. And then I started looking around the studio and saw uh, this Scotty Cameron putter and obviously recognized the name, but opened it up and, and took a look and, and just saw the multiple alignment angles on this putter. For me, this turned out to be fantastic. So we ended up extending it uh, by an inch. We put a super stroke wide grip. That was something so different than what I had before. My my current grip of my existing putter was probably like half this size. Interesting. And then the other thing that was really neat that I never even considered was the weighting of the putter. Bobby at the Barton Creek Fitting Studio immediately saw some necessary weighting changes that needed to be made in my putter. So that is the bag, the TaylorMade Stealth Pro Staff Bag. Really a vibrant red color, so neat. Went with the TaylorMade P790 irons, pitching wedge through four iron. We then did the Callaway Jaws Raw wedges. I did the set in 50, 54, and 58. We did the Scotty Cameron putter, and then we did the TaylorMade Stealth Hybrid three wood, and then the Ping G425 driver. So that's the new bag. So looking forward to, to taking this out and actually getting on the course and hitting some balls. I'll take you through my first range session with these new clubs and bags shortly. Thanks for jumping back into golf with me. This is going to be so fun.